Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now today we are talking chipping. Now I'm sure you would like more confidence when it comes to chipping around the greens and today's video is going to do just that. We're gonna be sharing with you the three biggest mistakes that we see golfers make and some simple drills that will help you when it comes to chipping around the green. So if you struggle with chipping around the green, I guarantee that you will be doing at least one or more of these things. So make sure you check them all out. Now this channel is all about helping you with your golf game. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that red button so you don't miss one of our videos and also what questions do you have on your game or what content do you want us to actually make let us know by posting down in the comments section below right let's get to the video all right so we're on the practice area at the grand and we're actually going to play all three shots from this position so we're not going to do anything on the rough we've got more videos on that all shots are going to be from the fairway so andy first one 20 yard ish Chip to the white flag. 20 yards, white flag, yeah. Okay, so what is the first one? The first mistake that we see, and this is from what golfers come to us for lessons and we say, what are you trying to do when you're chipping? What, what's your focus? And they go, well, I'm, I'm just trying to hit down on the back of the golf ball. So they'll, we'll see something like this, ball back in the stance, shaft leaning forward, and they're trying to hit down on the back of the golf ball. It actually wasn't too bad a shot. <laughs> it's the best shot you've played in about three months. I always do that. <laughs> but the issue that we've got with this, when people are trying to hit down on the back of the golf ball, it's okay if you get it right, but if you miss, you can duff it and you'll notice here what's happened. Look at this, the leading edge has really gone into the turf. This is what we do not want. So the, the, what we want you to think of is that rather than thinking about hitting down, the one thing that we always say is, look, you've got to understand that there are two interactions. We want the club and the ball to interact together, but we also want to interact the club and the ground in a good way. That one wasn't a good way. What we want to do is utilize the bounce. And we hear this all the time, you've got to use the bounce, but what does it mean? We want to use the leading, sorry, the sole of the club to glide along the surface. If we can get it to glide along the surface rather than digging in with the leading edge, this is going to be way more consistent, way more predictable, and it means you can even hit the ground slightly before the golf ball and still hit a good Did you shot. Do that again, Andy, because you're absolutely right there. So if I actually put a golf ball on your arm there, because you've got this flat spot now, you can actually hit the ground. It's not going to decelerate a lot because you've stuck the club in the ground. It's, so it's going to be a lot more consistent and offer you those different po uh, points where you can actually hit the ground. Yeah, so it's just, it's just room for error. You know, if we get this one wrong, it's death. Yeah. If we get this one wrong, it's still actually good. You'll see how, how much the club is on the ground for here. You know, it's gliding along the surface here. So the one thing I want you to leave, maybe a phrase, is swing at the ground, not at the golf ball. I'm not focusing purely on the golf ball here. I'm focusing on the ground. So let's hit a shot, and then we'll sort of go through how you can do that. So all I'm going to do here is focus on the ground, not the ball. So obviously I hit the golf ball there, but my intention was to actually strike the ground. And every practice swing that I have, I'm getting a sense of how the club slides across the surface. Again, that was beautiful. Lovely glide across the surface there. Good going. And it really feels almost, and it just feels so much more predictable. If I get it slightly off, I'm still gonna be left with a good shot. So a couple of key things that you can do. What is important to get this glide? Shaft angle is really important. What we wanna make sure that we do is get the shaft more neutral. As soon as we lean the shaft forward, the leading edge is going to dig in. So what we're going to do is get the shaft pointing more towards the belt buckle. We're going to get the ball in the middle or even slightly ahead of the center of the stance, not back in the stance. And we're going to get the weight leaning slightly on the left side. Shoulders are relatively neutral. Maybe the right's a little lower than that, but that's all we're really going to do to neutralize the setup out. So same flag again. But pointing at the belt buckle, feet close together, ball, maybe slightly ahead of the center of the stance, lean a little on the left leg, and again, just focus on that brush. That was nice again. Again, if I look at that one there, it looked like you hit the ground maybe an inch before. And this is something that when I was struggling with my short game, I was scared to hit the ground. But when you understand that you can hit the ground and actually the ground is your friend, it is a, t it's a, it's a, a light bulb goes off and you go, wow, I can now actually chip again. And me and Pierce have both, both missed the ball chipping yes we both missed the ball chipping years ago because we're doing this one because we're trying to hit the hit the hit down on the ball yeah and it's hit the ground and gone over the golf ball <laughs> yeah. so the great thing is now when you think of this it frees the tension up you've got so much more confidence and just by doing this and having a switch in focus it's going to completely change your chipping okay next mistake i don't know why people do it on chipping more so than anything else <laughs> is that they focus on swinging the club almost straight down the target line like this. So they think almost that the club should move in a straight line. 
Now, a couple of things happen when we do this. Notice that the arms, in order to get the club swinging down the, the target line, my arms now move away from the body. I lose this connection. Big gap, isn't So it? my arms start moving away from the body, which is not a good thing because it's going to change the consistency of where we strike the golf ball. The second thing is, in order to get this swinging in a straight line, my body now has to move this way. We don't want that on chipping because we're going to duff a lot, we're going to thin a lot through the back. So if you're somebody with a lot of duff, a lot of thins, you could be trying to swing the club in a straight line. Actually, before we go into the drill, let me show you what we're after. So from the down the line view, what we actually want to do is the club swings on an arc. So it will move on an arc on the way back. It moves back to the target line, but then it moves up and in from the target line again. So you'll see here that club now working up and left and around. Two things you'll see from this view is that my chest is now facing the target, but my arms are still connected to the torso. I'm not doing this, which we see so much of. So just being in a good finish position here, allowing the club to move up and left. My arms are nice and connected and my chest is facing the target. And guess what? Look from the front on view here, Pierce, if you come around. If you come around, yeah. The butt of the club is still pointing at the belt buckle. What I'm not doing is this. I'm really allowing myself to maintain that same relationship and finish here, which is so key for yeah. chipping. Yeah, so just a simple one here. Just get, get a towel, connect it underneath the sort of armpits here just to give you the feeling. And all we're going to do from here, arms nice and lightly touching the chest, back and through, and just hold your finish. So you'll see here the arms are connected to the torso. We'll make sure the chest is moving through. I'm still going to focus on the brush of the ground, but all I'm going to be aware of is the, th is the through swing here. So you'll see now, look, I'm turned to face the target. My arms are touching the chest. That's probably four feet away, maybe four and a half feet away. Look at the ground though. Look at what, you, I mean, obviously you destroyed it in that one shot, but the shots you've hit since, not destroying the ground. You should be able to play a lot of these shots and not even know that you've been here. So let me do another one of those again. And that was really nice, really soft. Again, you look at that one, that is now two feet. Best one, you're that getting better. That was nice, that was. So I love this drill because you can't do this and move your arms down the target line but combine that with a lineman stick or a golf club it's huge okay the next one some of you guys will disagree with this because we hear this this is the probably the most important thing that you can think about when chipping most people come to us and go they do this okay i decelerated on that i decelerated the club well what happened was the club hit the ground so it came to a stop quickly which means it decelerated now what most people make the mistake of doing is going i need to accelerate so they do this, so they go, right, okay, I need to accelerate. Short swing, massive acceleration. Again, not bad. <laughs> hard to judge distance. Of course. But also hard to get the strike. We spent some time with Ricky Fowler and he said he feels like everything is stopping at the golf ball. Are we saying that the club should decelerate through the golf ball? No. But what we are saying is that the hands should be slowing down before the golf ball. And what happens then, as the hands slow down, it passes its energy onto the club. So what Ricky was doing, and what you notice with a lot of the best players, a lot of their through swings were a little shorter than, the, than their back swings. The hands wouldn't travel very far. They're not going like this and accelerating the hands through. So we're not saying you need to slow the golf club down. What we need to say is that actually the hands slow down through the golf ball. The hands actually decelerate. And the way we do that is by making sure that the back swing is long enough. So we actually want you to feel like you decelerate through the golf ball. And that's really more of the hands. So Ricky Fowler, when he's playing these shots, he was just hitting shots going, I feel like everything stops here, but the hands are slowing down. The club still continues to move. And it's really important that we, we still, we're not saying that we need to do this, that is completely stopping the body. All we're saying is that we need to have a little bit more of a slower motion, but still continue to move through. You can see there, I'm not trying to accelerate. I'm actually quite soft there. And one of the things I always think about is that when you see some, someone with a good short game, what do you say? Oh, they've got soft hands. Mm -hmm. Now, fast hands and soft hands do not go together. This is not soft hands. But when you look at somebody like this, this is soft hands because now the hands are actually slightly on the D cell on the way through. Everything continues to move and it's just so huge. I would say that 80% of you guys watching this with short game will be accelerating. I'm allowing the smoothness and the length of the stroke to produce the distance. Nice. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. If you did and you want more of this short game, then make sure you click the video here and also check out our free five shots lower coaching series right here and look forward to seeing you soon.